Book Three of the Shadow and Bone Trilogy by Lee Bardugo. Rune and Rising. Chapter Three. The doors flew open. I threw out my hands and let the light blast into the passageway. A cry went up from the people lining the tunnel. Those who weren't already kneeling fell to their knees, and a chorus of prayer washed over me. Speak, I muttered to the apparat as I bathed the supplicants in glowing sunlight, and make it good. We have faced a great trial this day, he declared hurriedly. Our saint has emerged from it stronger than before. Darkness came to this hallowed place. I saw it, cried one of the priest guards. Shadows climbed the walls. About that, murmured Mal. Later. But they were vanquished, continued the operat, as they will always be vanquished, by faith. I stepped forward, and by power. Again, I let the light sweep through the passage, a blinding cascade. Most of these people had never seen what my power could truly do. Someone was weeping, and I heard my name buried in the cries of Sancta, Sancta. As I led the operat and the priest guards through the white cathedral, my mind was working, turning over options. Vladim went ahead of us to see my orders done. We finally had a chance to get free of this place, but what would it mean to leave the white cathedral behind? I'd be abandoning an army and leaving them in the operat's care. And yet, there weren't many options open to us. I needed to get above ground. I needed the firebird. Mal dispatched Tamar to rally the rest of the soul that soul and search out more working firearms. My control of the priest guards was tenuous at best. In case of trouble, we wanted guns at the ready, and I hoped I could rely on the sun soldiers to stay loyal to me. I escorted the operat to his quarters myself, Mal and Toya trailing us. At his door, I said, In one hour, we'll lead services together. Tonight, I leave with my Grisha, and you'll sanction our departure. Sol Korleva, the operat whispered. I urge you not to return to the surface so soon. The Darkling's position is not a strong one. The Lansoff boy has few allies. I'm his ally. He abandoned you at the little palace. He survived, priest. That's something you should understand. Nikolai had intended to get his family and Bagra to safety, then return to the fight. I could only hope he'd succeeded and that the rumors of him wreaking havoc on the northern border were true. Let them weaken each other. See which way the wind blows. I owe Nikolai Lansoff more than that. Is it loyalty that drives you, or greed, pressed the operat? The amplifiers have waited countless years to be brought together, and you cannot wait a few more months? My jaw clinched at the thought. I wasn't sure what was driving me, if it was my need for vengeance or something higher, if it was hunger for the firebird or friendship with Nikolai. But it didn't much matter. This is my war, too, I said. I won't hide like a lizard under a rock. I beg you to heed my words. I have done nothing but serve you faithfully. The way you serve the king? The way you serve the darkling? I am the voice of the people. They did not choose the Lansoff kings or the Darkling. They chose you as their saint, and they will love you as their queen. Even the sound of those words made me weary. I glanced over my shoulder to where Mal and Toy awaited a respectful distance away. Do you believe it? I asked the priest. The question had plagued me since I'd first heard word of him gathering this cult. Do you really think I'm a saint? What I believe doesn't matter, he replied. That's what you never understood. Do you know they've started building altars to you in Fierda? In Fierda, where they burn Grisha at the stake. There is a fine line between fear and veneration, Alina Starkov. I can move that line. That is the prize I offer you. I don't want it. But you will have it. Men fight for Ravka because the king commands it, because their pay keeps their families from starving, because they have no choice. They will fight for you because to them you are salvation. They will starve for you, lay down their lives and their children's lives for you. They will make war without fear and die rejoicing. There is no greater power than faith, and there will be no greater army than one driven by it. Faith didn't protect your soldiers from the Nichevoya. No amount of fanaticism will. You see only war, but I see the peace that will come. Faith knows no border and no nationality. Love for you has taken root in Fierda. The shoe will follow, then the kerch. Our people will go forward and spread the word, not just through Ravka, but through the world. This is the way to peace, Sancta Alina, through you. The cost is too high. War is the price of change. And it's ordinary people who pay it, peasants like me, never men like you. We, I silenced him with a hand. I thought of the darkling laying waste to an entire town, of Nikolai's brother Vasily commanding that the draft age be lowered. The operat claimed to speak for the people, but he was no different than the rest. Keep them safe, priest, this flock, this army. Keep them fed. Keep marks off the children's faces and rifles out of their hands. You leave the rest to me. Sancta Alina. I held open the door to his chamber. We'll pray together soon, I said, but I think you could use a head start. Mal and I left the operat secured in his chambers and guarded by Toya, with strict orders to make sure that the door stayed closed and that no one disturbed the priest's prayers. I suspected that the operat would soon have the priest guards, maybe even Vladim, back under his control. But all we needed were a few hours' start. He was lucky I didn't cram him into a damp corner of the archives. 
When we finally arrived at my chamber, I found the narrow white room packed with Grisha and Vladim waiting at the door. My sleeping quarters were amongst the largest in the White Cathedral, but it was still a challenge to accommodate a group of twelve. No one looked too badly off. Nadia's lip was swollen, and Maxim was tending to a cut over Stig's eye. It was the first time we'd been allowed to gather underground, and there was something comforting about seeing Grisha crowded together and sprawled over the meager furniture. Mal didn't seem to agree. We might as well travel with a marching band, he grumbled under his breath. What the hell is going on? Sergei asked as soon as I dismissed Vladim. One minute I'm in the infirmary with Maxim, the next I'm in a cell. He paced back and forth. There was a clammy sheen to his skin, and he had dark circles beneath his eyes. Calm down, said Tamar. You're not behind bars now. I might as well be. We're all trapped down here, and that bastard is just looking for a chance to get rid of us. If you want out of the caves, then this is your opportunity, I said. We're leaving. Tonight. How? Stig asked. By way of answer, I let sunlight flare for a brief, brilliant moment in my palm, proof that my power had ignited in me once more, even if that small gesture took more effort than it should. The room erupted into whistles and cheers. Yes, yes, said Zoya. The sun summoner can summon, and all that it took was a few deaths and a minor explosion. You blew something up, said Harshaw plaintively, without me? He was wedged up against the wall next to Stig. Our two inferni couldn't have looked more different. Stig was short and stocky with nearly white blonde hair. He had the solid, stubby appearance of a prayer candle. Harshaw was tall and rangy, his hair redder than Jinya's, nearly the color of blood. A scrawny wench tabby had somehow made her way down to the bowels of the white cathedral and had taken a liking to him. She followed him everywhere, slinking between his legs or clinging to his shoulder. Where did those blasting powders come from? I asked, perching next to Nadia and her brother on the edge of my bed. I made them when I was supposed to be making salves, said David. Just like the Aprot said. Right under the noses of the priest guards? It's not as if they know anything about the small science. Well, somebody must. You got caught. Not exactly, said Mal. He'd stationed himself by the doorway with Tamar, each of them keeping an eye on the passage beyond. David knew we were meeting in the kettle, said Jinya, and he guessed about the master flu. David frowned. I don't guess. But there was no way to get the powders out of the archives, not with the guard searching everything. Tamar grinned. So we had the opera deliver it. I stared at them in disbelief. You meant to get caught? Turns out the easiest way to schedule a meeting is to get arrested, said Zoya. Do you know how risky that was? Blame Aretsev, Zoya replied with a sniff. It was his idea of a brilliant plan. It did work, Jinny observed. Mal lifted a shoulder. Like Sergei said, the operat was waiting for an opportunity to take us out of action. I figured we'd give him one. We were just never sure when you'd be in the kettle, Nadia said. When you left the archives today, David claimed he'd forgotten something in his quarters and came by the training rooms to give us the signal. We knew the operat would be more likely to trust Toya and Tamar, so they roughed us up a little, a lot, put in Mal. Then they claimed to have discovered a devious plot involving a few wicked Grisha and one very gullible tracker. Mal gave a mock salute. I was afraid he'd insist on putting everyone in the cell, said Tamar, so we claimed you were in immediate danger and that we had to get to the kettle right away. Nadia smiled, and then we just hoped the whole kitchen wouldn't fall in on us. David's frown deepened. It was a controlled blast. The odds that the cave structure would hold were well above average. Ah, above average, said Jinya. Why didn't you just say so? I just did. What about those shadows on the wall, asked Zoya. Who pulled that off? I tensed, unsure of what to say. I did it, said Mal. We rigged it as a distraction. Sergey paced back and forth, cracking his knuckles. You should have told us about the plan. We deserved a warning. You could have at least let me blow something up, added Harshaw. Zoya gave an elaborate shrug. I'm so sorry you felt excluded. Never mind how closely we've been watched and that it was a miracle we weren't found out. We definitely should have jeopardized the whole operation to spare your feelings. I cleared my throat. In less than an hour, I'll be leading services with the operat. We'll leave directly after that, and I need to know who's going with me. Any chance you're going to tell us where the third amplifier is? asked Zoya. Thus far, only the twins, Mal, and I knew where we'd hoped to find the firebird. And Nikolai, I reminded myself. Nikolai knew too, if he was still alive. Mal shook his head. The less you know, the safer we'll be. So you're not even telling us where we're going? Sergei said sulkily. Not quite. We're going to attempt to make contact with Nikolai Lansov. I think we should try Revost, said Tamar. Go to the river cities? I asked. Why? Sturmhond had smuggling lines throughout Ravka. It's possible Nikolai is using them to get arms into the country. Tamar would know. She and Toya had been trusted members of Sturmhan's crew. If the rumors are true and he's based somewhere in the north, then there's a good chance the drop point near Revost is still active. That's a lot of maybe and not much more, Harsha observed. Mal nodded. True, but it's our best lead. And if it's a dead end, asked Sergei. We split up, said Mal. We find a safe house where you can lie low and I take a team to find the Firebird. You're welcome to remain here, I said to the others. 
I know the pilgrims aren't friendly to Grisha, and after tonight, I'm not sure how sentiment will change. But if we're captured above ground... The Darkling doesn't deal kindly with traitors, finished Ginny quietly. Everyone shifted uncomfortably, but I made myself meet her gaze. No, he doesn't. He's had a shot at me, she said. I'm going. Zoya smoothed the cuff of her coat. We'd move faster without you. I'll keep up, Ginny countered. See that you do, said Mal. We'll be entering an area crawling with militias, not to mention the Darkling's Alfred Nicky. You're recognizable, he said to Ginny. So is Toya, for that matter. Tamar's lips twitched. Would you like to be the one to tell him he can't come? Mal considered this. Maybe we can disguise him as a really big tree. Audric shot to his feet so fast he nearly bounced me from the bed. See you in an hour, he declared, as if daring anyone to argue. Nadia gave me a shrug as he marched out of the room. Audric wasn't much younger than the rest of us, but maybe because he was Nadia's little brother, he always seemed to be looking to prove himself. Well, I'm going, said Zoya. The humidity down here is murder on my hair. Harshaw rose and pushed off from the wall. I'd prefer to stay, he said with a yawn, but Onkat says we go. He hefted the tabby onto his shoulder with one hand. Are you ever going to name that thing, Zoya asked? She has a name. Onkat is not a name. It's just Kalish for cat. Suits her, doesn't it? Zoya rolled her eyes and flounced out the door, followed by Harshaw and then Stig, who gave a polite bow and said, I'll be ready. The others trickled out after him. I suspected David would have preferred to remain at the White Cathedral, cloistered with morose of his journals. But he was our only fabricator, and assuming we found the firebird, we would need him to forge the second fetter. Nadia seemed happy to go with her brother, though it was Tamar she grinned at on the way out. I'd guessed that Maxim would choose to remain here at the infirmary, and I'd been right. Maybe I could get Vladim and the other priest guards to set an example for the pilgrims and take advantage of Maxim's skills as a healer. The only surprise was Sergei. Though the White Cathedral was miserable, damp, and dull, it was also relatively secure. As eager as Sergei had seemed to escape the apparat's grasp, I hadn't been sure he'd want to take his chances with us above ground. But he'd nodded tersely and simply stated, I'll be there. Maybe we were all desperate for blue sky and a chance to feel free again, no matter the risk. When they were gone, Mal sighed and said, Well, it was worth a try. All that talk of militias, I said, realization dawning. You were trying to scare them off. Twelve is too many. A group that big will slow us through the tunnels, and once we're above ground, they'll put us at greater risk. As soon as we have a chance, we'll need to split up. There's no way I'm taking a dozen Grisha into the southern mountains. All right, I said, assuming we can find a safe place for them. No easy task, but we'll manage it. He moved toward the door. He moved toward the door. I'll be back in a half hour to take you to the main cavern. Mal, I said, why did you step between me and the priest guards? He shrugged. Those aren't the first men I've killed. They won't be the last. You kept me from using the cut on them. He didn't look at me when he said... You're going to be queen some day, Alina. The less blood on your hands, the better. The word queen came so easily to his lips. You seem certain we'll find Nikolai. I'm certain we'll find the firebird. I need an army. The firebird may not be enough. I rubbed a hand over my eyes. Nikolai may not even be in Ravka. The reports coming out of the north could be lies spread by the Darkling. The Prince of Air might be a myth created to draw us out of hiding. Nikolai might never have made it out of the Grand Palace. It hurt me to say it, but I forced myself to speak the words. He could be dead. Do you believe that? I don't know. If anyone could make that escape, it's Nikolai. The too clever fox. Even once he'd abandoned his disguise as Sturmhond, that's who Nikolai had been to me. Always thinking, always scheming. But he hadn't predicted his brother's betrayal. He hadn't seen the Darkling coming. All right, I said, embarrassed by the quaver in my voice. You haven't asked about the shadows. Should I? I couldn't resist. Maybe I wanted to see how he would react. I curled my fingers and shadows unspooled from the corners. Mal's eyes followed their progress. What did I expect to see in him? Fear? Anger? Can you do more with it? He asked. No, it's just some kind of remnant of what I did in the chapel. You mean saving all our lives? I let the shadows fall and pinched the bridge of my nose with my fingers, trying to stave off a rush of dizziness. I mean using resost. This isn't real power. It's just a carnival trick. It's something you took from him, he said. I didn't think I imagined the satisfaction in his voice. I won't say a word, but you shouldn't hide it from the others. I could worry about that later. What if Nikolai's men aren't in Ravost? You think I can track a giant mythical bird, but I can't locate one loudmouth prince? A prince who's managed to evade the Darkling for months. Mal studied me. Alina, do you know how I made that shot, back in the kettle? If you say it's because you're just that good, I'm going to take off my boot and beat you with it. Well, I am that good, he said with a faint grin. But I had David put a beetle in the pouch. Why? To make aiming easier. All I had to do was track it. My brows rose. Now that's an impressive trick. He shrugged. It's the only one I know. 
If Nikolai's alive, we'll find him. He paused, then added, I won't fail you again. He turned to go, but before he shut the door, he said, Try to rest. I'll be outside if you need me. I stood there for a long moment. I wanted to tell him that he hadn't failed me, but that wasn't quite true. I'd lied to him about the visions that plagued me. He'd pushed me away when I'd needed him most. Maybe we'd both asked each other to give up too much. Fair or not, I felt like Mal had turned his back on me, and some part of me resented him for it. I glanced around the empty room. It had been disconcerting to see so many people crammed in there. How well did I know any of them? Harsha and Stig were a few years older than the others, Grisha who had made their way to the little palace after they'd heard the Sun Summoner had returned. They were practically strangers to me. The twins believed I was blessed by divine power. Zoya followed me only grudgingly. Sergei was falling apart, and I knew he probably blamed me for Marie's death. Nadia might too. She'd grieve more quietly, but they'd been best friends. And Mal. I suppose we'd made a kind of peace, but it wasn't an easy one. Or maybe we had just accepted what I would become, that our paths would inevitably diverge. You're going to be a queen someday, Alina. I knew I should at least try to sleep for a few minutes, but my mind wouldn't slow down. My body was thrumming with the power I'd used and eager for more. I glanced at the door, wishing it had a lock. There was something I wanted to try. I'd attempted it a few times and never managed anything more than a headache. It was dangerous, probably stupid, but now that my power had returned, I wanted to try again. I kicked off my boots and lay back on the narrow bed. I closed my eyes, felt the collar at my throat, the scales at my wrist, the presence of my power inside me like the beat of my heart. I felt the wound at my shoulder, the dark knot of scars made by the Darkling's Nietzsche Voya. It had strengthened the bond between us, giving him access to my mind as the collar had given him access to my power. In the chapel, I had used that connection against him and almost destroyed both of us in the process. I was foolish to test it now. Still, I was tempted. If the Darkling had access to that power, why shouldn't I? It was a chance to glean information, to understand the way the bond between us functioned. It won't work, I reassured myself. You'll try, you'll fail, you'll have a little nap. I slowed my breathing, letting power course through me. I thought of the Darkling, of the shadows I could bend to my fingers, of the collar around my neck that he had placed there, the fetter at my wrist that had separated me irrevocably from any other Grisha and truly set me on this path. Nothing happened. I was lying on my back in a bed in the white cathedral. I hadn't gone anywhere. I was alone in a vacant room. I blinked up at the damp ceiling. It was better that way. At the little palace, my isolation had nearly destroyed me, but that was because I had hungered for something else, for the sense of belonging I'd been chasing my whole life. I'd buried that need in the ruins of a chapel. Now I would think in terms of alliance instead of affection, of who and what would make me strong enough for this fight. I'd contemplated killing the Operat today. I'd burned my mark into Vladim's flesh. I'd told myself I had to, but the girl I'd been never would have considered such things. I hated the Darkling for what he'd done to Bagra and Jinya, but was I so different? And when the third amplifier was around my wrist, would I be different at all? Maybe not, I conceded, and with that admission came the barest tremor, a vibration moving over the connection between us, an answering echo at the other end of an invisible tether. It called to me through the collar at my neck and the bite at my shoulder, amplified by the fetter at my wrist, a bond forged by Merzost and the dark poison in my blood. You called to me, and I answered. I felt myself drawn upward, out of myself, speeding toward him. Maybe this was what Mal felt when he tracked, the distant pull of the other, a presence that demanded attention even if it couldn't be seen or touched. One moment I was floating in the darkness of my closed eyes, and the next I was standing in a brightly lit room. Everything around me was blurry, but I recognized this place just the same. I was in the throne room at the Grand Palace. People were talking. It was as if they were underwater. I heard noise, but not words. I knew the moment the Darkling saw me. He came into sharp focus, though the room around him remained a murky blur. His self-control was so great that no one near him would have noticed the fleeting look of shock that passed over his perfect features. But I saw his gray eyes widen, his chest lock as his breath caught. His fingers clenched the arms of his chair, no, his throne. Then he relaxed, nodding along to whatever the person before him was saying. I waited, watching. He'd fought for that throne, endured hundreds of years of battle and servitude to claim it. I had to admit it suited him pretty well. Some petty part of me had hoped I'd find him weakened, his black hair turned to white like mine. But whatever damage I'd done to him that night in the chapel, he'd recovered better than I had. When the murmur of the supplicant's voice cut off, the darkling rose. The throne faded into the background, and I realized that the things closest to him looked the clearest, as if he were the lens through which I was seeing the world. I will take it under advisement, he said. Voice cool as cut glass, so familiar. Now leave me. He gave a brusque wave. All of you. Did his lackeys exchange baffled glances or simply bow and depart? I couldn't tell. He was already moving down the stairs, his gaze fastened on me. My heart clinched and a single clear word reverberated in my mind. Run. I'd been mad to attempt this, to seek him out, but I didn't move. 
I didn't release the tether. Someone approached him, and when he was just inches from the darkling, he came into clearer focus. Red Grisha robes, a face I didn't recognize. I could even make out his words. The matter of signatures for, then the darkling cut him off. Later, he said sharply, and the corporal Nick skittered away. The room emptied of sound and movement, and all the while the darkling kept his eyes on me. He crossed the parquet floor. With each step, the polished wood came into focus beneath his boot, then faded away again. I had the strange sensation of lying on my bed in the white cathedral and being here, in the throne room, standing in a warm square of sunlight. He stopped before me, his eyes studying my face. What did he see there? He had come to me unscarred in my visions. Did he see me healthy and whole, my hair brown, my eyes bright? Or did he see the little mushroom girl, pale and gray, battered by her fight in the chapel, weakened by life underground? If only I'd known you'd prove such an apt pupil. His voice was genuinely admiring, almost surprised. To my horror, I found that pathetic orphaned part of me taking pleasure in his praise. Why come to me now, he asked. Has it taken you this long to recover from our skirmish? If that had been a mere skirmish, then we were really lost. No, I told myself. He'd chosen that word deliberately, to intimidate me. I ignored his question and said, I didn't expect compliments. No. I left you buried beneath a pile of rubble. And if I told you I respect your ruthlessness, I don't think I'd believe you. The bearer's smile touched his lips. An apt pupil, he repeated. Why waste my anger on you when the fault is mine? I should have anticipated another betrayal from you, one more mad grasp at some kind of childish ideal. But I seem to be a victim of my own wishes where you are concerned. His expression hardened. What have you come here for, Alina? I answered him honestly. I wanted to see you. I caught the briefest glimpse of surprise before his face shuddered again. There are two thrones on that dais. You could see me any time you liked. You're offering me a crown? After I tried to kill you? He shrugged again. I might have done the same. I doubt it. Not to say that motley of traitors and fanatics, no, but I understand the desire to remain free. And still you tried to make me a slave. I sought Marutz of his amplifiers for you, Alina, that we might rule as equals. You tried to take my power for your own. After you ran from me, after you chose... He stopped, shrugged. We would have ruled as equals in time. I felt that pull, the longing of a frightened girl. Even now, after everything he'd done, I wanted to believe the Darkling, to find some way to forgive him. I wanted Nikolai to be alive. I wanted to trust the other Grisha. I wanted to believe anything so that I wouldn't have to face the future alone. The problem with wanting is that it makes us weak. A laugh escaped me before I thought the better of it. We would be equals until the day I dared to disagree with you. Until the moment I questioned your judgment or didn't do as I was bid. Then you would deal with me the way you dealt with Jenny and your mother, the way you tried to deal with Mal. He leaned against the window and the gilded frame came into sharp focus. Do you think it would be any different with your tracker beside you? With that Lansoff pup? Yes, I said simply. Because you would be the strong one? Because they're better men than you. You might make me a better man. And you might make me a monster. I've never understood this taste for Akazatsia. Is it because you thought you were one of them for so long? I had a taste for you once. His head snapped up. He hadn't expected that. Saints, it was satisfying. Why haven't you visited me, I asked, in all these long months. He stayed silent. There was barely a day at the little palace when you didn't come to me, I continued, when I didn't see you in some shadowed corner. I thought I was going mad. Good. I think you're afraid. How comforting that must be for you. I think you fear this thing that binds us. It didn't frighten me. Not anymore. I took a slow step forward. He tensed but did not move away. I am ancient, Alina. I know things about power that you can barely guess at. But it's not just power, is it? I said quietly, remembering the way he had toyed with me when I'd first arrived at the palace. Even before, from the first moment we'd met. I'd been a lonely girl, desperate for attention. I must have given him so little sport. I took another step. He stilled. Our bodies were almost touching now. I reached up and cupped his cheek with my hand. This time, the flash of confusion on his face was impossible to miss. He held himself frozen, his only movement the steady rise and fall of his chest. Then, as if in concession, he let his eyes close. A line appeared between his brows. It's true, I said softly. You are stronger, wiser, infinite in experience. I leaned forward and whispered, my lips brushing the shell of his ear. But I am an apt pupil. His eyes flew open. I caught the briefest glimpse of rage in his gray gaze before I severed the connection. 
I scattered, hurtling back to the white cathedral, leaving him with nothing but the memory of light.